because we're talking about the divine masculine, and many people are, what is the divine masculine? So a lot of talk about the divine feminine and the reemergence of the divine feminine. But the divine masculine really is this ideal quality of consciousness that forgot its origins long enough to strive to become, to truly allow itself to emerge out of not knowing and to become the vehicle of its own knowing. In other words, what Jung would call the quality of consciousness that has allowed us to individuate, to go from being celebrants of consciousness, a type of collective quality of consciousness where we are aligned and we are one. But we also see when this happens, we look at different ancient civilizations and we see a great deal of hierarchy, meaning that the inherent story is in the relationship that everyone knows and everyone shares. But this breaking down of this type of collective knowledge of where we belong is really the hard and arduous beginning of a journey that will take us into the realms of becoming unique artists of consciousness, meaning that we will finally embrace the truth that it is not one story which we are trying to understand ourselves through, but that it is we are composed of story itself. People talk about being creative. I say it's time to say, no, 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 you are creation. It's far more powerful than being creative. We are born of creation, and our natural tendency is to be the language of creation, meaning bringing things into being, into form. But to do this, we had to study our form. And this is where we start to understand, in mystery tradition, in ancient tradition, the knowledge of the Father. Because people would say, well, what are the mysteries of the Father? What's the knowledge of the Father? The knowledge of the Father are the unique principles, the laws, the structure, the fundamental patterns of the psyche that are the same in all of us. This is why in this work, the word pattern, potter, pattern, father becomes significant. Because as Pythagoras said, God geometrizes. But what he did not say, or what was not written down, was the next question. What does God geometrize? It is not something that begins with mathematics. The first principle is creation. God geometrizes the one, creation. When God geometrizes creation, creation emerges in a scintillating pattern of infinite capacity, meaning that there are, like snowflakes, infinite combinations of creation. And this, when we look into the heart of everything we admire in consciousness, what do we admire as human beings? Their compassionate nature, their loving nature, their profound, their, their ancestral nature, their sense of being worthy, their sense of nobility. These aren't things that just are inherited or come through entitlement. These are things that we develop because we earn them. And this is where the story of the grail, the story of that which, through refinement, we ultimately become. Why do these stories surround us? It is because they are the very means, essentially that are trying to dwell in us, to be given permission to awaken as our greater identity, our true identity. And this is why the male or masculine qualities of time in mind, as I like to put it, that when we understand the father as the father, the horizontal father, and the vertical father, we will begin to perceive our journey. The vertical father, like the summer solstice and the winter solstice, as we know from tradition, is when the sun stops moving forward in time and stands erect. So when this occurs, this motion, which has been the following of the Father in time, today is different than tomorrow. I need next season to get to where I need to belong. If only I were in the golden age, I wouldn't be dealing with all of this darkness. You see, we're chasing something. But those moments when the solstice comes, we stand erect. We no longer follow the outward turning motion of the weather conditions of mind and being. We allow ourselves like a spiral to spiral ever more tightly and finally stand erect. When this occurs, that which we were following as the spin of an idea is seen as just that, a spin. We are the axis then around which this turns. And we have this on the planet itself. She tells us, you see my axis. When you stand at my axis, it turns, and I turn in these greater relationships. And when we return, and as I always point out, when we're talking here, we're talking in a home. 
And the greatest metaphor is that we are returning home, meaning that these are not things that we need to learn, they're not things we need to study. We have studied them enough. They're stories we need to once again give our deeper selves permission to say, I like this version better. And this is why in the journey of the divine masculine, we begin with the outward thrusting ego. I am the one God, the only God. There is no other God before me. All other gods are demons. I will smite my enemies. You see what that is? That's really the ego. I don't know where I'm from. I must be self-created. And because I am, I must dominate that which I do not know. And when we look at all of the parables, all of the stories, and, and put aside our need to believe or not believe, because what I like about myth, it says this is not an examination of faith or belief. This is an examination of the stories that allow us to be human and make some sense out of the difficulties and the dark weather that affects all of us. And this is why when we look at religion, not as anything that slights religion or people that need those beliefs, but there are those of us that say there is great beauty in all of the story there. And if we go a bit more deeply, like archaeologists, we start to see ourselves even more clearly. And my work over my life, as we see with the archetypes of the major arcana of the tarot, and with the paintings, with, with the things that I've done, have taken me into this journey, this place that says, we now have experienced the father of the horizontal, meaning, and think about chronos, time, separation. We have been sent outward, and this thrusting outward, you are not this, and God is very angry at you. I'm very disappointed in you. How could you have sinned? How could you have broken my heart? How could you have given up your innocence? This dwells the very heart of each human being. Whether we even believe the myths or don't, it's in our DNA. We've been children told that we are not good enough. And no matter what we do, we are going to fail or we are ultimately going to die in despair because we won't have been able to do what we wanted to do. And this is something that I feel very strongly 9-11 is connected with in terms of with this story that begins with the world archetype and the nature of Saturn. Saturn is, in tradition, Kronos. It is the quality of time. Kronos in mythology separates his father Uranus from his mother Gaia. Because uh, Uranus, every time Gaia is conceiving, he pushes back into Gaia and does not allow her to conceive. So Kronos emerges and cuts off his father's <coughs> phallus and testicles. <laughs> and from the blood falling into the oceans, the titans of war. But also there's the severing of heaven and earth. And this is a very important mythic understanding of the development of the ego as well. Because once we create separation, this is this because it's not that, we begin to develop unique qualities of mind that can only develop because those conditions are set. And if we look at our journey through history and time and difficulty, we will begin to appreciate that it is in our own lives we begin with the mother. We are born of the mother, woven of the mother, we are nourished by the mother, we are protected by the mother. We then leave into the world of time, of Kronos, and the questions then change. Not about being connected, but about how do you survive the sheer brutality of being so disconnected. And so the questions change, and it hardens our outer form. And if we start to look at the elements of religion that are about hardness, about taking a very good beating, we'll start to honor them rather than ridicule them because we'll say, wait a minute, maybe if we think more like a human plant, that we've been developing qualities of consciousness so we can hold more and more of our own greater implication. And this is why what we'll see in these images will take us to a, an image of Hildegard of Bingham that really starts to explain a lot of the ideals that were held about that as humans, we are on a great human pilgrimage. We fell into mater, matter, mother. We fell into the fullness of being. We pulled forth pattern, potter, pattern, father, so that we could create an architecture that allowed us to apply this absolute fullness of beauty and knowing. 
We had to figure out a way to separate the density. This is why in alchemy it's called the prima materia, the root matter. How do you transform this root matter into that which it is, of course, the true nature of, which is everything? In a sense, it is absolute dark matter, matter, mm -hmm. mother. It is the fullness of love to such a dense degree that we couldn't even bear it. And so we blow bubbles of air into it, basically, and we call those universes. Mm -hmm. Because in those universes, as the oils go around the outer rim, a little bit of that inner fullness is able to mitigate into those worlds. And then we start to reflect upon ourselves. And finally, we reach a point of going, you know what? We're works of art. We're the outcome of a great artist of consciousness. It's vision from which we are born. Not, not some sinful nature, but actually an exuberant nature. So I'm sure dove in going, well, how hard could it be? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did we not know. But everything in my life has come from, well, how hard could that be? The tarot took me 17 years because I offhandedly said, why don't I do that? How hard could that be? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been dragged by the scruff of my neck by these energies for so long. And then when I started on the floor, I was on the floor. I had no intention upstairs of ever painting a whole room because I, like you, would say that's insane. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so the whole point was that had I known what I was going to do, I never would have done it because I would have had offhandedly convinced myself that there was no way I knew enough to do any of the things I did. I, I really relate to Edison on this because he said, thank God I never went to college to learn all the things I couldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what I really feel in my work. A lot of this it, it is, it is teaching, but most of it's unteaching. Most of it's going, you guys know so much. If you could see yourself energetically, it's like, you are so compressed with absolute knowing and density of mind and being because you're the outcome of billions of years. So you're a star system sitting mm. here. As a matter of fact, you're star systems <coughs> that said, oh, you're so spacious. But you know, I long to be intimate. What can I do if I forget the next moment? If I don't know what's going to happen? Suddenly love becomes absolutely <coughs> precious. Becomes something I can't control. I don't know whether you're going to be here the next moment or not, you see. How precious that makes it all. Mm -hmm. So as I say, rather than saying, oh, we're going back to vastness, I say, no, no, no. We came from vastness. We've been trying to get into it. Mm -hmm. Because when we get into it, we become truly ensemble. Mm -hmm. We start to see the unique beauty and universe of each. That's and that's why even in Hinduism, where it says every atom is a universe in miniature. And you're composed of what? Infinite atoms. So you're universes. And with that in mind, this is what begins the 9-11 journey, because this is my world archetype. It's dated 9-11, 1986. Mm -hmm. So it's 15 years to the day of the falling away of the towers. When this occurs, you start to see the towers are here already. Mm -hmm. This is starting to tell us about a journey that won't reveal itself as facts, but it's starting to say, if we trust our mythic sense, meaning that that creative gnosis, where you're not figuring it out and going, I've got a new fact God told me, but rather creatively, more like an actor or like a performer, you say, I have this inspiration, it feels right, it sits right. When I move my body, does it look right? Does it feel right? We start to use a different set of perceptual organs. And this is what I feel is happening in this journey, because we will see that in this falling away of the old binary mind of this is this because it's not that, we have the emergence of the deep feminine. But notice, she is standing within all worlds simultaneously. She is growing from the root. And this is very important because we've had this either or. We've genderized consciousness, meaning it's girl or boy, as opposed to understanding, no, it's fundamentally yin or yang. It's when you're moving outward, thrusting outward, you relax and pull inward. When you breathe out, you that when you uh, uh, breathe in, you exhale. What's that? How does it go? <laughs> Breathe in, you blow out. It's funny how the simple things kind of fade away. <laughs> <laughs> but probably that was her saying, breathe. Yeah. 